JFT just fair and direct. Good morning, everyone, and welcome to JFT's daily market review for May the 24th. I am Harala Mospisuros, head of research here at JFT. Now we'll talk about yesterday's main market movers, what's my opinion moving ahead, what are today's important events and how they could affect the markets. But before we start, let's read our disclaimer. The content we produce does not constitute investment advice or investment recommendation, should not be considered as such, and does not in any way constitute an invitation to acquire any financial instrument or product. I will leave you a few seconds uh, to read the rest, and then we will jump into our analysis. Okay, the US dollar traded mixed on Monday and during the Asian session Tuesday. It gained against NZD, AUD and slightly against the CAT, while it lost uh, ground versus CHF, the Euro and slightly versus the Japanese Yen. The greenback was found virtually unchanged against the British Pound. Now the weakening of the risk-linked Aussie, Kiwi and Luni combined with the strengthening of the safe havens franc and Yen suggests that uh, at some point yesterday or today in Asia, sentiment deteriorated again. So turning our gaze to the equity world, we see that uh, major European and US indices traded well in the green, but appetite deteriorated uh, during the Asian session today, with all Asian indices under our radar trading in the negative territory. Now, European shares may have been uh, boosted by the unexpected rise in uh, German business morale, as indicated by the IFO survey for May. In our view, this underscores uh, the resilience of uh, the euro area's biggest economy in the face of high inflation, the war in Ukraine, and supply chain problems around the globe, and adds credence to the view that the ECB is getting closer to pushing the hike button. Now, truly, ECB President Christine Lagarde said yesterday that the ECB is likely to take its uh, deposit interest rate out of the negative uh, territory by the end of uh, September and could lift if and excuse me, could lift it further if needed. Now, given that the deposit rate is, is at uh, minus 0.5 percent, we believe that this means two quarter point uh, liftoffs. Uh, maybe one in July and one in September. And actually, this is what policymaker uh, Villeroy de Gallo, uh, French ECB policymaker, said after Lagarde's uh, speech. He also added that uh, those liftoffs are essentially a done deal. Now, all this resulted a spike higher in the euro, with the euro dollar pair emerging above the downside resistance line drawn from the high of uh, March 31st. Technically, this points to some further advances, but the fundamental spin off is also supporting uh, that idea. We are in the midst of encouraging data and headlines surrounding the eurozone economy, but also some concerns over the US outlook. That said, even if, Euro, uh, even if Euro dollar trades a bit higher, we are reluctant to change our stance uh, with regards to equities. For now, we will continue treating any further recovery as a correction. After all, cementing expectations over uh, rate hikes by the ECB means higher borrowing costs for European firms. And actually, we don't expect the Fed to slow down for now. We still see 250 basis points increments in June and July, respectively. According to the CME Fed Watch tool, both those double hikes are fully priced in. Now, today, investors are likely to lock their gates on the preliminary PMIs for May from the Eurozone, the UK and the US, as they would like to have a clearer picture with regards to the performance of the global economy. In the euro area, the manufacturing PMI is forecast to have declined to 54.9 from 55.5, while the services one is anticipated to have just inched down to 57.5 from 57.7. This is likely to take the composite index down to 55.3 from 55.8. 
Though pointing to a slowdown, all three indices are expected uh, to remain within the expansionary territory. And thus, we don't expect market participants to withdraw their bets with regards to the ECB's future course of action. For that to happen, we believe that the negative surprise and the dip below the boom or bust zone of 50 may be needed. Expectations are for uh, relatively small declines in the UK as well, but with the Bank of England warning over an economic contraction uh, next year, any misses could bring the pound under selling interest as market participants will bring lower their expectations with regards to the bank's future uh, rate increments. Yes, with inflation in the UK hitting 9%, the Bank of England will most likely continue to lift borrowing costs, but due to fears of a recession, they could follow a slower path than they have been estimating a couple of months ago. Now, flying to the US, there the manufacturing index is expected to have declined to 57.9 from 59.2, while the services one to tick down to 55.4 from 55.6. Declines in the world's largest economy as well could confirm concerns over a worldwide economic slowdown. However, if the forecasts are met, both indices will still be above the equilibrium line of, of, um, of 50. And with Fed Chair Jerome Powell hinting that they will proceed with their 50 basis points increments in the next couple of months, we don't expect market participants to change their minds. Now, as uh, for tonight, during the Asian session Wednesday, the spotlight is likely to fall on the RBNZ interest rate decision. The bank is expected to hike interest rates by 50 basis points for the second time in a row, with a number of total hikes, regard regardless of the size, in the post-pandemic era, being five. When they last met, officials of this bank hiked by 50 basis points, but noted that they remained comfortable with the outlook for the official cash rate as outlined in February, and that the larger move was intended to provide more policy flexibility. In other words, they may have decided to hike by more than in order to be able to slow down later. The Kiwi came under selling interest after uh, the meeting, but uh, more recently due to its strong uh, link to risk, it has been feeling the heat of the, deterior of the deterioration in the broader market sentiment. It slowly started correcting uh, a bit higher after the release of the RBNZ's la latest deflation expectations, and that's maybe why participants are betting on another double hike despite the bank's language following the last decision. So, with that in mind, a 50 basis points hike by itself is unlikely to boost uh, much the Kiwi. For that to happen, officials need to sound more hoggish than in April, leaving the door open to more increments of, su of such kind. Now, in case they hike by less or signal that, again, this was a flexibility move, not intended to stiffen the rate path projections, the commodity-linked currency is likely to come back under uh, selling interest. So, that's it uh, from me. Thank you very much uh, for watching and listening. For those who are interested in learning about the main events of the week much earlier, you can subscribe to the weekly Market Outlook webinar, which I'm hosting every Monday at 7 o'clock a.m. GMT. You can find the link in the description below. So, goodbye, have a great day, and I'm looking forward to seeing you here again tomorrow. JFT, just fair and direct.